Ariel Helwani alongside the Strikeforce Bantamweight champion Misha Tate, who meets Ronda Rousey March 3rd in Columbus, live on Showtime. And Misha, thank you very much for the time. This is obviously a fight that a lot of people are looking forward to. I'm wondering, after all that happened over the last few months between you and Ronda, you and Ronda, do you feel as though Strikeforce made the right call by putting her in there against you and not Sarah? I think from a publicity standpoint, definitely. I think the marketable uh, marketability of this fight is huge. I think it's a fight the fans want to see the most, and so you know that's the fight that we should deliver. Um, maybe not on paper, you know. Sarah Kaufman is probably the number one contender, I would say, safely on paper. But um, I think uh, after I beat Ronda, and granted Sarah Kaufman wins, and I get my rematch that I'm really hoping for, it'll make that fight that much bigger after this fight. So when Sean Shelby called you up and said you're fighting Ronda, did you try one last time to convince <laughs> him that she was not worthy of this shot? No, he actually said, um, okay, so you're fighting your arch enemy. And I said, well, which one? That was my response. Is Tara Kaufman or Ronda Rousey? I didn't. And uh, he said, Ronda. I said, okay, fine. You know, I mean, that's whatever. I don't even care at this point. I'm over it. So after your appearance on my show alongside Rhonda, when you guys were going back and mm -hmm. forth, there were some people who said that, yes, you brought up good points, but they believed that the reason you didn't want to fight her was not because of her looks or how she's been marketed. It's because you thought you didn't match up well with her. You didn't want to fight her because you thought you would lose. What do you say to those people? Well, they're wrong. You know, I mean, they can have their opinion if they want to, but I mean, that's absolutely incorrect. I have a problem that I feel like she talked her way into the title fight. I don't feel she earned it. Um, you know, I have no problem with, you know, being pretty and marketable. I think that's great. But, uh, you know, I worked my way to the title fight. So it's it's kind of irritating when you put your time and money in and then and someone else comes in and takes the shortcut. That's what I feel she kind of did. And that's why I'm irritated with it. But uh, I actually think I match up really well with her. I think, you know, nine times out of 10, wrestling trumps judo. There's a lot of things that I can do as a wrestler to just shut her judo down, nullify it. And my grappling is world class. Um, so far, she's shown she has an armbar, and she lasts about a minute. Um, she seems real desperate to get the armbar right off the bat. Um, so it leads me to believe that maybe she's not well-rounded or doesn't feel confident in her um, other skills, uh, which I know I am. I've been in the championship rounds. I've had 20 fights. I've had six years of experience. Um, so, you know, I'm really confident going into this fight, and I'm excited. I actually like to fight ground people because I think it's more entertaining, you know, when you have someone who can move around on the ground with you. One of my favorite fights was against Hitomi Akano. She's a second-degree judo black belt, um, and she was a part of the Japanese national team um, for judo. So uh, most of her arms were, or her wins by, were by armbar as well, and I think that was most of my, my funnest fight and my most entertaining fight. So I think this will be a really good one as well. Obviously, you're expecting the armbar, but since her fights haven't gone past the first minute, how do you really game plan for her? Um, just got to prepare to be my best myself. I have to prepare for everything and anything. And as a champion, I think that you should be prepared for everything and anything. You know, you never know what can happen. I mean, if Ronda got hurt and then I'm fighting Sarah Kaufman or something, you know, so I have to be ready for absolutely everything. There's not a lot I know on her besides uh, she does like the arm bar. She's really efficient at it. And uh, you know, she's pretty desperate to get you to the ground and try to go for that. Other than that, you know, I just have to expect the unexpected. She's never fought on a stage like this before. There's a lot of buzz surrounding her. Do you think the magnitude of the moment will get to her on March 3rd? I definitely think so. You know what I think is going to happen? I think once we get outside that minute and she realizes, wow, she's a lot stronger than I realized and making this cut to 135 was a lot harder than I realized. And I wrote uh, some checks that my mouth couldn't cash. And uh, also, you know, we're not wearing our pajamas this fight. We are uh, no gi, so that throws a lot of a wrench in the whole judo mix. Um, so I think uh, me having the wrestling background, I've never worked with a gi, um, will also have the advantage from over under hooks. You know what I mean? That's like bread and butter for me. So. Um, take that away and I think uh, I think I have the edge so you just pissed off all those jujitsu players who train in gi now you know that right <laughs> that's okay Rhonda's been pissing people off and me off so I guess that it's all in fun games now you've had to do some media with her in Columbus and uh, all over the place you've had to do autograph signings with her what's it like being so close to the person that a you don't really like and b you're gonna fight in a month it's weird it was really weird and awkward at first um because uh, what's so awkward about her is that she can go and talk all this trash and uh, yet she expects me to like her, be nice to her, you know, be friendly to her. And, uh, you know, I'm just a lot more real than that. It just leaves me to leave. She's kind of a fake person. Uh, she likes to talk and, you know, be uh, weird in front of the camera and do all this stuff. But, you know, either it's not really who she is behind the scenes or or she's just 
really, really weird. And, uh, you know, she expects me to say hi to her and be nice to her. And she she likes to be the center of attention. And I'm just not about to give her any of that. So um, she doesn't like me for that. But that's OK. Cause I don't so, like her either. So what do you think it is, though? Do you think that she is putting on an act or do you think she really doesn't like you and all the things that she says about you and and, and what we see in the media is the real Ronda Rousey? No, I think she's putting on an act. I think 100 percent. You know, I think she's trying to sell the fight. And I think that's what she's been trying to do from the very beginning. And she's, uh, you know, not really being true to herself necessarily. She's just uh, I don't think she has any problem with me um, other than the fact that I've been, you know, I haven't been nice to her because I don't like her. But uh, that is definitely sincere on my part. And uh, as for her, I definitely just think that she's trying to put on the show, she's trying to sell the fight. And uh, that's not how she would be normally otherwise. Do you think if you were fighting Sarah Kaufman, this fight would be the main event? I don't know, you know, I've uh, been asked that a couple times and, um, you know, we were scheduled as the co-main event. So when the main event falls through, it, it should be the that the co-main event moves to the main event. Um, however, I'm not sure if they were confident if that fight um, and matchup would sell as well as uh, Ronda and I. I'm not sure if they would have put it as the main event. I'd like to think so. But, uh, you know, I don't know. But in the back of your mind, would you admit that her buzz and her talk has uh, brought a lot more interest to this fight than you versus Sarah? Yeah, absolutely. I think, um, you know, I can give credit where credit's due. You know, Rhonda is an amazing athlete. I'm not taking that away from her. And she also knows how to sell a fight and market herself. She's done a great job at that. Um, although I personally don't like, you know, the way that she's done it for, for well, the way that I like to sell myself. But um, she has done a great job creating a buzz for women's MMA. She's very controversial. She speaks her mind. And, uh, you know, she's one of those people that whether you love her or you hate her, you want to see her fight. Whether you want to see her win or you want to see her get her ass kicked, she's drawing viewers and uh, bottom line at the end of the day that's what women's MMA needs this is the biggest women's MMA fight since uh, Corona versus Cyborg and in, in some ways it's even more important because this is part of the Zufa era how much pressure do you feel considering all that other stuff not the stuff you do in the cage but just what you have to do to keep women's MMA alive so to speak mm -hmm. going into March 3rd there's a lot of lot riding on this fight I feel like this is kind of a pivotal moment you know if we can deliver if we can sell if we can draw the numbers and if we can make the money that really says a lot for the future of women's MMA if we can't you know what I mean it could lead to the demise you know, if, if Strike Force does not continue with Showtime after this next year, I don't know what that's going to mean for women's MMA if we can't prove that we definitely can hang with the boys and we're just as entertaining and people want to see it just as much as the men's MMA. That's my goal. And so, you know, I have a lot of um, motivation and ambition to go out there and make sure that this fight is what people want to see and ensure our future and hopefully, you know, maybe uh, work our way into the UFC, you know, so. Especially with Cyborg suspension, Gina out. Really, the spotlight is on you. It's all on you. It's on your shoulders right now to continue women's MMA in Zufa. That's a pretty huge role. Are you ready yeah, for that? Absolutely. I mean, it is. It's a huge responsibility, and I realize the importance of it. And, uh, you know, the thing that's good about it for me is I work well under pressure. I always have. You know, I've said before, I've always been kind of a procrastinator when it comes to, like, school projects or anything, my history, you know. But I would always do a great job and have a great finished product, you know. So um, I feel like when the pressure's on, you know, I'm definitely always on point. How will you win on March 3rd? <laughs> There's so many ways I want to win. I haven't picked one. I'm any mini mighty mo. Um, I definitely believe I have, I have more tools to finish this fight than she does. You know, um, I think she's going to be looking for a submission. You know, obviously she's probably look for an armbar. She may throw some crazy punches. I know she's uh, underestimating my stand up a little bit, but I have the knockout power. I have the wrestling. I have the ground. You know, I can do all of that, and I can do it all well, and I can mix it up. The transitions in between, I think, is the evolution of MMA. You know, it's not just about being good at one thing. It's about putting it all together and making it mesh well. That's that's the, where the, um, mixed martial arts is headed. So being strong in every area is definitely important. Um, I would either love to knock her out. That would be a great feeling. Or uh, finish my armbar. That would be pretty sweet, right? It would be like the icing on the cake. That would be the icing <laughs> on the cake. It goes down live on Showtime March 3rd from the Nationwide Arena in Columbus, Ohio. Misha Tate defends her strike force bantamweight title against rowdy Ronda Rousey. Thank you so much for the time and good luck on March 3rd. Absolutely. Thanks, Ariel.